We're going to first look at a basic definition of uh, As-Samad, As-Samad ay Al-Kafi. Uh, As-Samad is the one who is enough. Al-Ladhi yarji'una ilayhi idha ahtajuhu. The one who they return to whenever they have a need of him. Huwa al-Ladhi yakfihim. He is the one who is enough for them. Wa yasuddu hajatihim wa as'ilatahum al-Ladhi yasmiduna ilayhi. And he is the one who fulfills all of their needs and their question, answers all of their questions. The ones that they attribute to him or turn to him with عند الحاجة at the time of need. هذا معنى الصمد. This is the meaning of صمد في اللغة. صمد إليه أي توجه إليه. And linguistically speaking, when you use the word صمد as a verb, it means to turn attention towards someone. وطلب منه الحاجة or to demand from them the fulfillment of a need. المصمود إليه هو السيد المتوجه إليه. المصمود is the the word مصمود is actually what صمد implies. Is the one to whom people turn in time of need. Another meaning. This, so that's one meaning I'd like you to remember. Samad, one you turn to in time of need. The second meaning. Samada ilayhi ay qasadahu. The second verbal meaning is when you make someone your goal, that you aspire to reach them, or you aspire to please them, or you aspire to attain them, etc., etc. When you attribute someone as your goal, they become a samad. So Allah is saying that He is the one we turn to in need, and He's also calling Himself the ultimate goal. He is the goal of what we do. And of course, this is one of the reasons this is called Suratul Ikhlas. Because sincerity, Ikhlas, is when we do things and the goal of it is always Allah Azza wa Jal. So that's included in the meaning of As-Samad. وَالصَّمَدْ أَيْضًا الْغَنِي الَّذِي لَيْسَ فَوْقَهُ أَحَدْ One of the meanings of Samad also is the one who is not in need of anyone else and no one can overpower them or be above them in status or in, uh, in any attribute. الَّذِي لَا عِبَ فِيهِ The one who has no, uh, uh, no blemishes or no faults in him. مِنَ الرِّجَالِ الَّذِي لَيْسَ فَوْقَهُ أَحَدْ It's used also, for, in, liter- in Arabic literature it's used for a person also, the one who cannot be overcome. Meaning can't be overcome in battle, you can't outdo them in business or in their leadership or in their eloquence, then they're also called a fixture, a samad. Okay, so this is from a linguistic uh, point of view. Additionally, Mufassirun comment, a samad implies عَظِيمُ jalala. That's one thing, that he's, he's incredible and great in terms of his glory. الدائم الخالد it's the ever, he's the everlasting المقصود لقضاء الحاجات we talked about that the one who is turned to to fulfill needs this this is important now شيء صمد the word صمد is used as an adjective also something that is صمد مصمت لا جوف فيه أو جوف له it is uh, referred to as something that is solid with no holes or emptiness inside something that is through and through Pure one thing, like a pure brick of gold could be summit. Or a pure a boulder with no possibility of any air or water getting in could also be called, an attribute of it could be summit. Meaning something absolute and concrete without any flaw. Right? That's, that's one of the meanings. One of the interesting commentaries by Al-Biqa'i rahimahullah in his tafsir, نَظْمُ الدُّرَرْ فِي تَنَاسُبِ الْآيَاتِ وَالسُّورِ Commenting on the previous surah, which was the previous surah? Surah Lahab. Surah Lahab talked about a person who thinks he needs no one. He can, everybody needs him because he was the treasurer. Who are we talking about? Abu Lahab. And Allah is even, after he's done with, now you should know, the only one that is actually As-Samad is Allah Azza wa Jal. So there's this contrast. Well now that the, you know, the, the, his filthy, uh, self-absorbed concept, because he was self-absorbed. His ilah was himself. He worshipped himself. He didn't even worship any other religion. And you have to remember what he said when the messenger invited him to the religion, you know, there's one time he cursed the messenger himself. We reminded ourselves, "Tabalak ali hada jamaatana." May you be cursed. May your hand, you be destroyed. Did you gather us for this? But this other time, he cursed the religion. And when he cursed the religion, what was his uh, what was his criticism? "Tabal li hada din." An akuna sawa, you know, li haula. I will become equal to these people. <laughs> You want me to accept that religion where I will have an equal because he thinks he has no equal. Now Allah is teaching us the only one who has no equal is he. He's the only one absolute and he's the only one that is ahad. Now we get to the logical conclusion. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. There are several things to note here. We'll go through them one by one. The first thing to note here, what is the connection between the previous ayah and Allah saying, He did not give birth to any, He didn't father anyone. 
nor is he fathered himself, nor is he, the old English term, he didn't beget, nor was he begotten. And I'm using was carefully, because Allah doesn't say, لا يلد ولا يولد. لا would have been present tense. He does not beget, he will, he, and he is not begot. Allah used lam, lam. And lam forces the meaning of a verb to the past tense. It forces, so I'm, I'm translating, he did not beget, he did not father, nor was he fathered. So the first thing we have to figure out is the benefit of the past tense in this ayah. Why use the past tense? Why not say he does not father, and he is not fathered? Why not? Well, the, the latter makes logical sense. The fact, lam yulad, he wasn't born of anyone, makes sense, because birth happens in the past. So that makes sense. But why not protect shirk from the future too, by saying, la yalid. He does not give birth. Well, one of the problems with that would have been, if you say he does not give birth, that doesn't necessarily negate that he did not give. He did not father. So that rooms, leaves room for shirk in the past. Leaves room for shirk in the past. That's, that's one thing. The second thing is, we've already said ahad and as-samad. Which means already there is no, there's not going to be anyone comparable. Having a child, what does it do? A human being begets a human being. A cat gives birth to a cat, you know, a dog to a dog. An animal gives birth to an equal, to someone of the same species. We've already established he can't have a second. That's not possible for him. And this attribution of Allah having ma'ad Allah a son, like the Christian community or some segments of the Jewish community, or Allah having daughters like some segments of the mushrikun who said that he took angels as daughters, these attributes were not made of the present or the future. Where were these allegations made from? Of the past. Isa alayhi salam, Uzayr alayhi salam, the angels. All of these concepts are relegated to the past. One of the benefits of this past tense is Allah is addressing the falsehoods of the religions that already occurred. And in it, like Abu Bakr al-Baqillani actually commenting on Lam Yalid said, in it there's a miracle of the Qur'an in regards to its predictions. There will be no other religion that claims that God has children that will ever take hold on the earth, like which religions already took hold? Christianity at the, at the heart of it, right? Think of other religions that give, a, you know, uh, have a concept of God where He gives birth to another. All of them are relegated to what? Pre-Islam. Pretty much all of them pre-Islam. So now here, Allah Azza wa Jalla, Allah Azza wa Jalla addresses that with the problem that already occurs. أَنَّ أَوَّلَ السُّورَةَ يَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَاحِدٌ وَالصَّمَدْ عَلَىٰ أَنَّهُ كَرِيمٌ رَحِيمٌ He says the first part of this surah, make sure we understand that Allah is unique and one. The second part, Allah is samad, make sure we understand how gracious and merciful He is. Why is the grace of mercy embedded inside as samad? Because everybody turns to Him and He fulfills what they need. لِأَنَّهُ يُسْمَدُ إِلَيْهِ يَكُونُ مُحْسِنًا وَلَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُلَدْ عَلَىٰ أَنَّهُ غَنِيٌّ عَلَىٰ الْإِطْلَاقِ And the fact that he says he did not beget nor is he begotten, make sure we understand that he does not need anyone absolutely at all, and that he is, that he is free from all kinds of alterations in this, uh, or, or any kind of uh, weakness, because having children is a, is a type of weakness. Why is it weakness? Because I will die one day. How will my species continue? For an animal, how will the species continue? By children. By having offspring for human beings, if it's not, if you're not worried about the human species, you're at least still worried about your last name <laughs> or your family, you know. And if you're not worried about it now, when you become forty or fifty, you say, uh, "Yeah, I don't have any children. Nothing. I have nothing to leave behind, right?" This is the kind, and this is the thing that the Arabs gave so much importance. And so there's a contrast. One of the things that was said about the messenger that was the most hurtful, Abdar doesn't have any kids, doesn't have sons. That, was an in, that can be an insult to the creation. And a, and a compliment to the creation is, you have children. And كَانَ لَهُ مَالٌ وَبَنِينَ مَالٌ وَبَنِينَ This is actually a, an attribute. Wow, he's got money and kids. He's doing well. This was a status symbol in Arab society. But the same thing that is an insult to the messenger, to say that he doesn't have a child or doesn't have a son, etc., etc., would be insulting to the messenger. But to say Allah has would be an insult to Allah Azza wa Jalla. It's reversed, right? Because what what is the honoring of Allah can never be compared to the honoring of creation. They're two very different standards, and so Allah makes sure we understand the different standards for these two different things. Subhanahu wa taala. So, this surah, in conclusion, this surah is. Probably the most important surah for our children to internalize. 
to internalize. Not just memorizing, I think every, all our kids know it. And all of you know it. But to internalize. What does it really mean? What does it really mean practically for me that Allah is Ahad? That He is as samad That He has no beginning and no end. And, and we talked about the, 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 the uh, psychology of shirk that is crushed in lam yalid wa lam yulad. And then walam yakul lahu kufuwan, no counterpart, no one can be compared to him. So you understand in times of need, in times of difficulty, when you recite walam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad, you will remember. All my problems can come from somewhere, but you know Allah can solve them and there's no one who can create problems when Allah solves them. This is the surah where we learn to completely give ourselves to Allah. Completely give ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a reason Sahaba loved this surah so much. There's a reason, it protects us from so many things. And the, the, the thing I tell you, one of the names of this surah, an najat This is the surah of rescue. It rescues you from depression, from sadness. It rescues you from it. Because now, whenever something happens, you can take your problems to who? Allah. You can take your problems to the police station, you may or may not get an answer. You can take your problems to your physician, you may, not, may or may not get results. But there's one place you will get, you always go, you'll always get. You will always get. It removes your problems. And it's najat min an nar for millions and millions and millions of people who end up doing the worst crime of shirk. This surah comes and protects even the least educated of the Muslims. If they can just learn this surah, they'll be protected from the fire. They'll be protected from that great, that heinous crime of shirk. May Allah protect us and our children from the crime of shirk. May Allah make us internalize the, the remarkable lessons of this surah. May Allah make us of those who understand the Qur'an, internalize it, remember Allah by means of the Qur'an, and practice it along with the sunnah of His beloved Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.